Now as we get to the last item on our program, last but not least, it's really the centerpiece of our day. We decided to invite, and she graciously accepted, Dr. Bonnie Markham to give some of her, share with her, from a donor's perspective, some of her insights. But before she comes to the podium, I'd like to say a little bit about her. Dr. Markham earned her PhD in social psychology from Columbia University. And during her early career, she taught at the Douglas College, Rutgers University. She did research in early childhood education at New York University and program evaluation, research, and teaching at the University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey, Robert Wood Johnson Medical School, where she remains on the adjunct faculty. She received a PsyD in clinical psychology, and since graduating, she has served her school as a clinical psychologist supervisor, president of the Alumni Association, and co-chair of the multi-million dollar capital campaign. For the past 25 years, Dr. Markham has been in independent practice in Metuchen, New Jersey. She's always been active in professional and community organizations, and while she has served in many leadership roles, her particular interest is in the financial management of not-for-profit groups. Currently, she is the treasurer of the American Psychological Association and chairs its finance committee. Past service includes positions as treasurer of the New Jersey Psychological Association and treasurer of the Division of Independent Practice in state and territorial and provincial psychological associations of the American Psychological Association. Dr. Markham has been a strong and committed supporter of GAZAP, serving in many capacities, including president of the GAZAP alumni organization, a field supervisor for graduate students, <coughs> chair of the GAZAP commemorative booklet task force, representative to the RU Alumni Federation, member of RU Alumni Federation Investment Committee, and the list goes on. In 2009, Dr. Markham received the newly established Rutgers University Alumni Association Block R Award, recognizing service to the alumni body through volunteer involvement in charter organizations working with university partners, such as undergraduate admission, career services, in support of Rutgers community initiatives and through other special volunteer roles. She is also active in other professional organizations, most notably the American Psychological Association. In Division 42, Psychologists in Independent Practice, she served as treasurer from 2014 to 2016 and as a Council of Representative member from 2014 to 2016. She's also served on the APA Finance Committee, as I mentioned. In 2005, Dr. Markham was awarded Distinguished Psychologist of the Year by the APA Division. She is active in APA Division 29 for psychotherapy and currently is chair of the Finance Committee. In Division 31, state, territorial, and provincial associations. Dr. Markham has established the Bonnie Markham Fellowship to support clinical psychology students in the dissertation phase of their training at Gazette. Now, I'm gonna sort of put Dr. Messer on the spot for a little bit because I'd like to invite you to come up and say a few words about Bonnie because I know you know her personally and you've worked with her throughout the years. So if you don't mind coming up. And then the next we'll hear from Bonnie. Well, uh, I think you've really covered the ground uh, about Bonnie, Fran, leaving me little to say. But I will say that I have played tennis with her husband for many years. <laughs> so for me, that's one of Bonnie's claims to fame, namely that she's married to Myron Gessner, a psychiatrist who, by the way, has been a very good friend of Gazap's uh, over the year, but over the years. But I do know uh, Bonnie uh, personally as well as professionally, and she is one terrific uh, mensch, uh, lovely person, personable, warm. I am always 
uh, delighted to be in her, uh, in her presence. And I'll just add one other thing, and that is, as you mentioned, Fran, Bonnie was the co-chair of our uh, capital campaign, something that kept me very busy during my uh, tenure uh, as dean. But both she and David Panzer, who were the uh, co-chairs, were a tremendous support for that. And all <laughs> I was telling Jeff Axelbank and uh, Nancy McWilliams, all of these names up here are for me reminiscent of a luncheon meeting or a dinner meeting, some of which were held together with Bonnie as we traveled around the state uh, raising money uh, for the school. Now, raising money is not necessarily my favorite thing, and nor is it for most people, but it wasn't difficult. It wasn't difficult because, first of all, I was very committed to raising money for our students, knowing how much um, they needed it, and of course, um, being a very great fan uh, of Gazaps and uh, raising money wasn't for me, wasn't for Bonnie, it was for the school uh, and for the students. So I thank you, Bonnie, for all the work you've done, including, of course, as president of the Alumni Association uh, while I was uh, dean and enjoyed very much working with you in that capacity. But uh, those of you who are here who are students, I hope that you are inspired uh, by this event, and some years hence, we will be able to say about you the kinds of things that Fran has been able to say about our alumni, and prominent among them, uh, Bonnie Markham. Thank you. Well, in anticipation of speaking today, I thought I'd write something out. But I also would like to start with a detour and end with a detour. So do you all have one of these? Yes. <laughs> this was one of the um, alumni initiatives when I was president of the alumni organization, realizing the vision. We had started out with small but mighty, and we were advised that realizing the vision might work better. <laughs> so, so this was designed by a fellow graduate student, and I encourage you to figure out where they are or bring them back. Uh, you also should know that uh, when I served as president of the Alumni Association, it was all Stan Messer's fault. <laughs> One day, he uh, called me up and did a little arm twisting and a little cajoling and a little being charming. And, said how much he would support uh, the, the activities, and absolutely he did. There was not a Sunday that Stan wasn't at the alumni meeting totally supporting what we were trying to do. So uh, that's part of why I did it for so long. Another alumni project, I don't know if you've seen this, is a history of Gazap. And it's really fascinating, and I think Mary Crow has a few copies if you're curious, this is one way to find out more about the school that you're going to from a historical perspective. And it is very inspiring, believe me. So I'll go to my written remarks and then back to spontaneous. So each of us alumni, current students, staff, faculty, and donors and supporters from outside the school have all followed unique paths that eventually led to the Graduate School of Applied and Professional Psychology. In listening to the stories of all the honorees today, I'm awed, impressed, inspired. That is how it's always been for me in my exposure to and interactions with the Gazap community. I became a student at Gazap around 1980. It wasn't quite the beginning, but the student body was still quite small small enough so it was easy to know everyone. When Gazap first opened its doors, all the students already had master's degrees and had been working in the field for a number of years. By the time I got to the psychology building, there were significant numbers of students who were admitted right out of, graduate, right out of undergraduate school, so that my entering class was made up of people mostly in their 20s. Let me tell you about my first class at Gazap. It was the introduction to interviewing class taught by Stan Messer. I don't recall now what time the class met. I think it was the morning. 
I was working across the way at the medical school and dashed across the patio, not wanting to be late for my first class. A few students were already in the room, and as I walked in, one of them looked up and asked, are you Dr. Messer? <laughs> I was clearly older, wearing a professional suit, carrying an expensive briefcase, and rushing around like a person with important things to do. That was true. My immediate reaction to the question of my student colleague was, oh dear, I'm, I don't fit in. I'm never going to be accepted as an equal among the students. I'm too old, I'm, et cetera, et cetera. I had a million reasons why I wouldn't be okay. I was on the faculty of the Department of Psychiatry at what was then, and I think is again, sometimes called Rutgers Medical School. I, <laughs> I had a PhD in social psychology from Columbia University and was doing research on community mental health centers and also teaching interpersonal aspects of medical care. Years before, I had taught at Douglas, as had been mentioned, with Stan Messer and Sandra Harris. They were my colleagues. Um, my psychiatry department colleagues were also members of the faculty of GIZAP. And so I, I had a lot of other roles and it really made me nervous. How could I be a faculty over here and a student over here and be accepted? In a few minutes, the real Stan Messer appeared <laughs> and began the class. I was struck immediately with how he approached teaching. He treated everyone in the room as a colleague with valuable insights, creative thoughts, important things to say. He made the entire class feel smart and was very interested in all of our contributions. Stan's attitude was equalizing and helped me settle down and get to work with less concern about my image and more attention to the learnings at hand. Over the years I've been in Stan's classes, worked with him on alumni organization projects, and participated with him in the Gazap Capital Campaign always with a spirit of mutual learning and respect. This was my first experience at Gazap Stan's class, but that experience was repeated many times over with other faculty, with the deans. I was here for several deans, uh, staff and fellow students. For me, Gazap has always been a vibrant community of very smart people who are poised and ready to use all of their skills, talents, and experiences and knowledge to make a positive impact in whatever area they choose to focus on and do so collaboratively and respectfully. Definitely a winning combination. As I mentioned, I had a, graduate, a prior graduate school experience and had a doctorate when I came to Gazette. Columbia University was a very stimulating intellectual environment. I got an amazing education there. But the, com the community was largely competitive, driven, and intense. That was true of the faculty as well as the students. I mean, here's a student example. The faculty would put envelopes with your grades in your mailboxes, which were in a public room. And what I came to find out was that one of my graduate student colleagues went to the mailbox, steamed open the envelopes, and checked all our grades and then resaled them and put them back. So he knew what we got before we did. The environment at Gazap was very different. <laughs> I was a bit shell-shocked from some of my experiences at Columbia and found the collaborative, supportive community very healing. It was also a contrast to my experience at the medical school. I had many great colleagues, but was less comfortable with the administration, for good reason. I had gone half time so that I could do this ID coursework and complete my training while still working at the medical school. The Department of Psychiatry had what I considered the premier internship program around, and I applied. That essentially led to my being fired. Uh, a few members of the administration saw my application as a conflict of interest. Gazap came through again. I went to speak to then Dean Don Peterson, who let me cry in his office for a long time. 
and we talked, and then he set about problem solving with me. He helped me get an internship at St. Clair's in Denville and a half-time job at the health service at Rutgers Newark. And I was back on track, and had it not been for Don being so kind and gentle and generous and helpful, I probably would still be crying in his office. <laughs> So that there are, maybe the segue, and now I'm on the spontaneous part, is why psychology at all? And I have to say I've always wanted to be a psychologist, probably since high school. Um, I grew up in a family where my mother and all of her female friends were in psychoanalysis. And in those days, it was four times a week. That was what you talked about. You went to a dinner party, and all the women would gather after dinner and talk about their sex life and their fantasies and their dreams. And this was so exciting. And I was a quiet little only child, and I would just sit in the corner and not be obtrusive, and they would tell their stories, and I heard it all. It was pretty exciting. <laughs> the other thread was my father, who was an attorney, was really a psychologist. Um, his practice was largely advising family businesses, and the family businesses had many, many conflicts, and multi-generational family businesses. So he would talk about advising people who were in conflict in family businesses. So I grew up with the exciting psychoanalysis and the pragmatic solving family business problems. So it was sort of overdetermined that I would become a psychologist. So I go to college, I go to a very small college in upstate New York, Bard College. There were 250 students at the time. And I announced I'm going to be a psychology major. And some of you may know the name. The professor in my class was Frank Reisman, who did, uh, has done quite a bit of work on self-help. Um, within three or four days, I had a burst appendix, was rushed to the hospital, and missed the whole first three weeks of school. So when I came back, there was an exam in Frank Reisman's class, which I failed. And he approaches me and he says, you know, I think maybe you're making a mistake. Maybe you shouldn't go into psychology. Well, being kind of determined and competitive, I took that as a challenge and ended up the end of the year with the best grade in the class, and he offered me a summer job. <laughs> so it was a close call, but I, I was back on track. So the other issue is, well, why two degrees in psychology? Isn't one enough? So I came to the medical school as a social psychologist doing research. And I was doing research on clinical programs at the Community Mental Health Center and also doing some teaching on interpersonal skills, doctor-patient relationship, bedside manner kinds of things, which uh, use my social psychological uh, training. At one point, uh, a group psychotherapy course was offered at the medical school, and I convinced Arnold Callen, who was the head of the Community Mental Health Center at the time, that I really needed to take that course. It was a three-year course with didactic and supervision, and you would get cases, because I was doing research on clinical programs, and the best way to do good research was to really understand the clinical programs. And he said, okay, I mean, it was free. It was, didn't cost them anything more to stick another student in there. So after three years of that, I was really bitten by the psychotherapy bug. I was in psychotherapy myself. I was in this group training program. And I decided I had to go back and get a clinical degree. And where better than to come here to Gazap, where I knew the faculty, I knew how great this program was, and I could walk across the patio and get there. <laughs> so what turned out to possibly be partly convenience also turned out to be a really spectacular experience and has opened the doors for me in so many different ways to be a clinician, to be a leader, to be a participant, to be a donor. And I thank you all for having given me such a rich and wonderful opportunity. And I hope that my work and other donors' work will pass that on and it will keep going generation after generation after generation. So thank you very, very much.